the the thing that people get wrong on this is they jump into these very interesting and advanced concepts because you know you hear about them and you're like no one who wants to pay taxes no one wants to so people jump into it early and they don't realize the repercussions of it so when someone is is you know starting out you know they're they're gaining financial education they're building solvency the biggest thing there is compliance you want to make sure you're doing it correctly you want to make sure that you know everything is being done the right way and the reason being is you know somebody that's in that spot the worst thing that could happen to them is get audited you know if you're already not yet wealthy and it's already you know this thing that, that you're trying to build towards it takes a lot of time and effort just to get there you don't also need the IRS auditing you and, and taking your man hours away so that's another factor and then the other thing to look at too is you know when you're Later on down the road, the IRS can audit you in arrears. So if you're, you know, doing all this stuff when you're when you're starting out and you're not really paying attention, well, when you're wealthy and you have some money, you become a target. All the IRS has to do is say, "Hey, show me your last five years of tax returns." And if they find something from that point, they can hit you with penalties, back taxes, and, and then you're having to jump all the way back and handle this stuff. So the first thing to do is make sure that you are working with a professional team. They might not be the most aggressive and immediately, and that's for a reason. They want to be very compliant, very correct. Now, the other thing to look at too is, you know, if you're starting out and you're looking at getting, you know, loans for real estate or the first position HELOC, it's very easy to jump into the tax stuff, not consider this this idea of, you know, I'm reducing my taxable income. Now, when it comes time to get a loan, I don't show enough income to get qualified. Right, and that can bite you in the butt. The taxes are, are something you've got to spend on every year to get an ROI. Things like you know getting into the right loan, um, you know all of these things are, are residual. So my interest rate is lower on the loan, and I get a HELOC, and I have this strategy working for me. That's going to help help me now now and also years down the road. And so someone might not think about that. Like okay, I'm going to save a hundred grand this year, or two you know two thousand dollars, or whatever it might be in taxes but it might cost me hundreds of thousands of dollars over the next 10 years of my loan life. So once you get past that point, the next phase then is we start looking at some of the basics. We're looking at self-directed retirement plans. Um, we're looking at things like the Augusta rule, renting your primary residence to your business, paying your children, things that are kind of low hanging fruit. There's not a lot of complexity behind them. What you wanna keep in mind on taxes is all of these are, are arbitrary. The tax code is arbitrary. So that means the solution for them is arbitrary. And if you get too involved too quickly, you kind of build up all of these different, you know, vehicles and tools and things that now you need to know how they work. You need to know how to pay attention to them. And, and if you're not paying attention to the, the organization and administration of it, that can also weigh you down. Now, once you're investing and you have passive income and you're at that $250,000 net worth range, that's where we really can hit pedal to the metal on taxes. And, and then we can start looking at charitable trusts. You know, we can start looking at, at you know, more, more complex things. And at that point, you have enough investment income to maybe hire people to help with administration and, and organizing it all. But that's kind of the flow. And then once you're accredited, it just opens up even further and it just becomes more and more, you know, aggressive as you go down the line. But at that point, you know, you've got your foundation and you've got staff, you've got income, you've got the things you need in place to manage all of that. If you're wondering what does Wealth Dynamics do, how can we actually help you? Number one, if you haven't gotten a copy of my book, Blueprint to Financial Freedom, grab one now. You can get that down in the uh, comments in the video. You can get the link for that. Number two, we do a free course on Fridays on personal finance. Hey, you can also get the link for the description there too. And then finally, if you have a desire to start getting help walking through these different phases toward financial freedom, book a call with my team. Go to our website, set up a call, and we're able to help out and answer questions. That's how we can help you. Thank you for watching. Like, share, subscribe. Make sure you turn notifications on and I will talk to you guys on the next video.